This is democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn to Egypt, where after 400 days, Al Jazeera journalist Peter Gresty has been released from prison. Peter Gresty left a Cairo jail on Sunday and was quickly deported. He and two of his Al Jazeera colleagues, Mohammed Fahmi and Bahar Mohammed, were convicted on terrorism charges, including spreading false news in support of the Muslim Brotherhood, deemed by the government a terrorist group. Canadian Egyptian Fahmi and Egyptian national Mohammed are still in prison. The three were initially sentenced to seven to ten years, but earlier this month, an Egyptian court ordered a retrial. The managing director of Al Jazeera English, Al Ansti, spoke in Doha after Gresti's release. We spoke to Peter earlier on this afternoon, just after he was released from detention, and I can't tell you how relieved we are that Peter has left Egypt and is on his way to be reunited with his family. But it's a day of very mixed emotions, and I think we've got to focus on the fact that Bahar and Mohammed are still behind bars 400 days after being uh, taken into detention. And that injustice needs to come to an end. They are guilty of nothing apart from great journalism. Egyptian authorities accuse Al Jazeera of being a mouthpiece of the Muslim Brotherhood. Of course, the three journalists um, absolutely deny this and all the charges against them. The timing of Gresti's release came as a surprise, just days after Egypt suffered one of the bloodiest militant attacks in years. More than 30 members of the security forces uh, were killed last Thursday in Sinai. Australian foreign minister said Gresti flew to Cyprus from Cairo. Shortly after his release and before he departed Egypt, he was immensely relieved and he was desperate to come home to Australia and reunite with his family, his parents, Lois and Juris and his brothers Michael, who is with him, and his other brother Andrew. To talk more about the implications of Peter Gresti's release and the fate of his two colleagues still in jail, we go to Washington, D.C., to speak with Delphine Helgan, U.S. Director of Reporters Without Borders. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Delphine. Uh, talk about the significance of Peter Gresti's release and why you think it happened now. So, of course, we are all relieved by this great news, but uh, we have now a lot of work to do still, because uh, we have to continue to work to assure the release of all the journalists in Egypt who are detained on spurious charges, including the Al Jazeera journalists, but there are even more Egyptian journalists who are still uh, detained on spurious charges. So it seems that uh, the international pressure worked, and uh, we have to continue to do so. But I just want to highlight once again that actually the new Egyptian constitution adopted under uh, President Morsi actually guarantees freedom of expression, freedom of opinion, media independence. So once again, we urge the uh, Egyptian authorities to just implement their, their own uh, constitution. Reported to Australia, and um, the uh, fiance of Mohammed Fahmi says, "Deport Mohammed back to Canada." What is happening in his case? We are actually really looking at the news because we hope that after Peter Grace released yesterday, uh, there would be the release of the two other Al Jazeera journalists uh, in the coming days, in the coming hours. So we know that the Canadian government has been very active, uh, of course, on, uh, he, on this case, and uh, we are really hopeful that uh, there could be a. a, a good end to uh, at least this Al Jazeera case. But we don't have to forget the dozens of Egyptian journalists who are also detained on spurious charges and who don't have the same support from the international community. In the case of these three men, now two still in prison, why were the Al Jazeera reporters targeted? So it's really important, in fact, to understand this historic perspective. So first you have to uh, remember that all government in place after the fall of Mubarak have tried to control the media and try to control the information as much as possible. In a sense, we have seen a morsification of the media, and now we are seeing a sissification of the media. But it's also important to have in mind that the media freedom really declined since the army seized power and since Sisi 
is in power. Dozens of journalists have been arrested this last two years. Six journalists have been killed even during a pro Morsi demonstration. And now, right now, what we're seeing is that all media considered to be linked to the Muslim Brotherhood are persecuted. And Al Jazeera is one of the main targets of this witch hunt. Delphine, I wanted to turn to other news about reporters. I wanted to turn to Kenji Goto, the Japanese journalist beheaded by Islamic State militants. Video of his execution emerged over the weekend. Junko Ishido, Goto's mother, led tributes to her son in Tokyo. I cannot find the words in the face of such a heartbreaking death. Can I see you I can only express this grief with tears. I wish to continue to believe in Kenji Goto's wish for a world without war and in his work to save the children from poverty and war. Meanwhile, on Monday, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe reignited the debate on changes to the extent its military can operate overseas by saying the country would look into ways of rescuing its citizens if another hostage crisis happens. Currently, at the moment, if a Japanese citizen or someone with an NGO is in a dangerous situation, it is necessary to, of course, have permission from the country they are in, but they can only be transported out by Japan, but not rescued. We would like to start a discussion so that it will be possible for Japanese citizens to be rescued as well. That's the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Uh, Delphi Nalgan, if you can talk about what happened. I think there is no word, as the, the, the mom, the mother of these journalists said, but I, I just would like to, to highlight again that 2013 and the beginning of 2015 have been marked by an extreme level of, viola of violence targeting journalists from Syria to France. And what we have seen is that the murders are more and more barbaric, but also we have seen the apparition of a barbaric propaganda. We've carefully staged beheadings of Western journalists, but also public execution of local journalists, like in Iraq, and again, a barbaric propaganda with the Charlie Hebdo attack. And one other uh, comment that I would like to make is that in these last two years, we have seen an increase, an explosion in the number of journalists kidnapped all around the world, especially again in Syria, Libya, but also Ukraine. And again, I want to highlight one point. Ten percent of the journalists kidnapped right now are Westerners, but 90 percent of the journalists kidnapped right now are locals. And, and again, we don't have to forget that ISIS, by example, is kidnapping and is executed executing more local journalists than foreigners. And we have to, to keep that in mind to understand how, actually, the Islamic State is elding hostage journalists, is killing journalists, but at the end, their, what their main target is really the information and our freedom to all of us in Iraq, in Syria, and all over the world to be informed. Delphine Elgand, I want to thank you for being with us. And I <clears throat> want to end by going to comments from Mohamed Fahmy, who has criticized the Canadian government, saying they haven't done enough to free him. Again, he is a Canadian Egyptian. Canada has refused to even directly call for his release, saying only they have deep concerns about his case. In a statement last month, Mohamed Fahmy said, quote, I understand that the ability of the Canadian government to help me is limited by the rules of diplomacy, but I do believe that Prime Minister Harper could do more to obtain my release if he were to directly intervene in our case. Uh, Delphine Elgan, thanks so much for being with us uh, from Washington, D.C., U.S. Director of Reporters Without Borders. Owen, happy birthday.